Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 3, Part 1 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, introducing our responsibility to forgive and repent, and our role in engaging both processes. This session was recorded on 6th of September 2017 from 12.15 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Welcome back, everyone. This is our third session in a series Jesus and I are presenting on God's laws and principles relating to forgiveness and repentance. So today we will be moving on, but just briefly, if you are joining us, um, the, the overall topic of this series is really to highlight as much as we can the basic truths of forgiveness and repentance from God's perspective. And at the end of this series, we'll be responding to some letters that we received from listeners who had some questions specifically about forgiveness and repentance. Mm. So today, if you haven't if you haven't actually watched the previous um, sessions that we've had, we've had two prior sessions. Uh, in the first session, we talked about God's laws, why God created law, how to establish God's truth on anything. And we began to talk about God's truth about forgiveness and repentance. Uh, in the next session, we talked more about God's truth about forgiveness and repentance, and we focused you on what your part is in forgiveness and repentance. So if you haven't watched those two sessions, we recommend you go and do that before you begin watching this session, because everything we present throughout this series builds upon the previous sessions. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to be talking to you more about your role and responsibility in forgiveness and repentance. We'll be talking about sin, accidental sin and intentional sin, and how God views each of those and how they impact on forgiveness and repentance. And finally, we'll be talking about <laughs> if we make it that far, because <laughs> there's a lot to discuss. We'll be talking about personal sincerity when it comes to forgiveness and repentance. And you'll see how crucial personal sincerity is if you're actually ever going to forgive or repent. So welcome, everyone. And thank you, Jesus, for no joining worries, us. Uh, my pleasure. Me? My pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get down to business, hey, because mm. we've got quite a lot we want to talk about. Yes, there's a lot to cover today, and yes. uh, we'll see how we go covering it. <laughs> 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 All right. So let's talk about my responsibility mm. or my role when it comes to forgiveness and repentance. Mm. Obviously, um, a lot of what you have discussed with us so far mm -hmm. has been about what might be involved in forgiveness and repentance uh, and what might be required of me. Mm -hmm. um, but now this morning we've got a few a series of questions about um, my role and responsibility which is going to be in contrast to a later session we'll do which is about god's role in forgiveness and mm, repentance that's right yeah. yeah so firstly forgiveness and repentance are personal responsibilities aren't they mm. So even though it seems like we have free will, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that we can make personal decisions on a moment by moment basis about mm -hmm. what we're going to do, from what we've talked about in the previous sessions, it seems to be that God's laws are all operating in a way and that our soul is designed in a way that basically means that it does become a personal responsibility to forgive and repent. Yeah, well, God created us as responsible beings. He, he wanted, and by giving us the gift of free will, he basically was saying, look, here's the gift of free will, but you are responsible for how you use it. If you use it in harmony with the laws of love, then you'll be rewarded uh, and, and, and blessed with happiness by, by using it that way. But if you use your free will in disharmony with the laws of love, then God had to put into place corrections for that behaviour. Otherwise, his 
universe would have been had a potential for anarchy. Mm. So, so he, he had to provide a way through the operation of the law that, that adjustments or corrections could be made to us if we disobeyed the law. That being the case, um, you can see that both forgiveness and repentance are about when we break the law. So, mm -hmm. so when somebody else breaks the law and we receive the, the effects of them breaking the law, if we refuse to forgive them, we are now breaking another law. Yeah. Right. And so that, that now has, a pen, has penalties associated with it. And if we have broken the law and, uh, and harmed others or harmed the environment or harmed ourselves, then we have purposefully, in, obviously, had, to, had, had, had have to be corrected somehow. Yeah. And, and the only way that that can happen is through, again, the operation of the law. So, so this means then that God basically enforced resp the res uh, us to have the responsibility for our being and what we choose to do as our, our behaviour and our decision-making processes. Mm. And in the process of forcing us to be responsible, God now has to, make, has to also, through these laws, make us responsible for repentance and forgiveness, mm -hmm. because that is a part of the responsibilities that we bear based upon how we've used our free will. Mm -hmm. So in some ways you could almost say that we have free will, yes, mm -hmm. but, but God is not going to allow us to utilise our free will in such a manner as to, as to uh, introduce anarchy into his universe. Mm -hmm. And so what he has done is, is the laws provide penalties for when we attempt to introduce anarchy or our own, uh, impose our own will yep. on, the, uh, on the operation of the universe out of harmony with God's will. Mm -hmm. So we have complete freedom when we operate in harmony with God's truth and God's love. Yeah. But, but if we decide to not operate in harmony with God's truth and God's love, now we have restrictions. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the restrictions is the restrictions that are placed upon us when we refuse to forgive or we refuse to repent. And yeah. when I say one, there's a multitude of restrictions, obviously, that one, these laws place upon an individual if they refuse to do these things. So what God's trying to do is make us responsible for the processes of forgiveness and repentance. Yep. We are personally responsible for them, just like we're personally responsible for our decisions, our personally responsible for our choices. Repentance is a choice mm -hmm. that God makes us personally responsible for. And forgiveness is a choice that God makes us personally responsible for. And so uh, you could say responsibility is, if, is forced upon us Mm -hmm. because of the gift of will. Mm. You see, if we didn't have the gift of will, then we can't be responsible for what we chose to do because we wouldn't be making choices that we're cognizant of. Yeah. But now that we've given the gift of free will, we are now able to make choices and decisions that we are cognizant of. We can recognize the, the effects of them. And so now we have to be responsible for the effects of our choices. And this is the reason why God's made us responsible in the way that he has with regard to forgiveness and repentance. So back in our first session, when we talked about God's laws, you talked about the fact that, you know, there's no real way to break God's law. And we are almost forced through the operation of the law to either comply or be penalised and eventually to comply, really. Is, is that, so is that how um, forgiveness and repentance basically become a requirement of each of us? Well, something need, that the law requires of us? Yeah, well, we need to see firstly that um, it's not very restrictive because at the end of the day, it's just restricting unloving behaviour. Yes. With regard to loving behaviour, it, it is without restriction. Mm -hmm. So you can do anything you want as long as it's loving. Yeah. And, and, and so that gives you complete freedom. Yeah. And, and uh, it's only when we choose to do something unloving Mm -hmm. that we have restrictions placed yeah. upon us because of the penalties associated with the laws involved. Yeah. So that's the first thing we need to see. Se secondly, we need to also see that, yes, uh, while uh, God's laws, because of the way they've been constructed, they are going to enforce, if we've sinned, mm -hmm. so that's the proviso, of course, if we've sinned, God's laws are going to enforce repentance. Yeah. If another has sinned against us, God's laws are going to force us into forgiving them at some point, right? Yeah. Now, when I say force us, we can resist that force as yeah. much as we want. 
and you can resist it for thousands and, 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 and potentially tens of thousands of years. Mm -hmm. You can. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you will give up, <laughs> realizing that you're just trying to work against the law, yeah. and you will do what God is trying to make you do, and that is God's trying to make you responsible for, yeah. the, for the emotions you're holding that are outside of love. So when, when we have emotions in us that we need to forgive others, there are emotions inside of us that are out of harmony with God's definition of love, and God wants us to give them up. And when we refuse to repent, there are emotions inside of us that are out of harmony with love and God wants to give them up. Yeah. And, and God wants us to do these things because it's the right thing to do. It's the loving thing to do from God's definition. Mm -hmm. And that's why God's laws eventually will get us to forgive and repent eventually. However, we can use our will to resist those processes and quite we substantially. We talk more about that. Hopefully <laughs> we'll get to it at the end of yeah, the session. Of yeah. Course. But basically, you said God is trying to make us responsible. Isn't it more correct to say God is making us responsible, but it it's is. a matter of us, God's trying to get us to engage with consciously and willfully t um, dealing with things that are our responsibility in harmony with love? Yes, or? it would probably be more correct to say God uh, has made us responsible through law. Immediately, hey. But he is trying to make us re re recognize that we are responsible yes because he, to do that we have to be engaged so so we may choose to say oh, i'm not responsible and then god ha can only try to help us see that that's not true yeah that's all he can do mm -hmm. because we're using our will to say that yeah if if we are it, but but deep down we are responsible beings and god's just trying to help us see that we are we can refuse to believe we are, which many people, of course, do. And, but at the end of the day, that you will see that you actually have been responsible for everything you've chosen to do and everything you've chosen to, to refuse to forgive mm -hmm. as well. And, and the, this is the way God has made it so that eventually we can see, yes, I can see that his intention was to make me a responsible being yes. who, who is actually completely responsible for all of their, for all of their own emotions or all of my own actions and so forth. Mm. 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 Wonderful. Mm. Okay. So it is a personal responsibility, forgiveness and repentance. <laughs> yes. and so it's not something that you can go really in the long run, you, you start to see, it's not something you can go, oh, you know, I don't have to do it if I don't want to. Yeah. You, you will see eventually that God's laws have all been constructed to f to really force you into a position at some point of being responsible for your emotional condition. And repentance and forgiveness are emotions that are out of harmony with love that you're going to need to release. Yeah, well, they involve emotions. And they emo yeah. involve emotions, yeah. yeah, out of harmony with love. So yeah. you're going to have to release them. Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. yeah. It's a good thing that we often feel is not so good <laughs> when we're resisting. Well, th this is the case with a lot of God's laws, as we discussed yeah. in the first uh, session that we had, isn't it? Uh, yeah. A lot of God's laws are you know, there just for our complete happiness, but we resist them anyway <laughs> because <laughs> we think somehow that our definition of happiness is always going to be better than God's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> somehow, <laughs> which, which, which really proves our own arrogance in a lot of ways, doesn't it? It does. Mm. 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 Okay. So forgiveness and repentance are personal emotional processes. Mm. Now, yesterday we spoke about this uh, in our in session two, mm -hmm. and if anyone wants to go back and look at the specific sections or um, parts of that discussion where we talked about that, we talked about it in why forgiveness is a personal experience and why repentance is a personal experience. Mm. So we've touched on this, mm -hmm. but just to go back, because mm -hmm. it, it's very relevant in my responsibility to forgive and repent. Of course. Yeah. Um, obviously, from everything we've talked about so far, forgiveness and repentance are very much acting upon and involving our intentions, our desires, our emotions, and, and our actions, really, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So can you talk more about how forgiveness and repentance are very personal processes and how each individual will have a different process based on their own life experience and presumably based upon their individual intentions, aspirations, desires, emotions and actions. Mm. 
Well, let's first separate this answer into two parts. The first part is it is a personal process and the second part is that it's an emotional process. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because, uh, you know, the personal process is, is certainly, you can, most people would be able to see that. Obviously, uh, forgiveness, anything we have to forgive, is a, an emotional feeling we have inside of us where we've been hurt and that has to be released. So that's obviously an emotional process mm -hmm. and it's our hurt. It doesn't belong to anybody else. It's yeah. our specific hurt. So therefore, it must also be a personal process. Yes. And the same applies with repentance. Uh, if we can see with regard to repentance, repentance causes firstly hurt to others and ourselves which have to be felt as an emotional process. Mm -hmm. And it's our and decisions. And it's our decisions and yep, our choices that, we... that cause that hurt. Yep. Right. And then on top of that, uh, the underlying thing that we have to do uh, uh, after we've done that is we have to also look at the cause of why we chose to harm others or mm -hmm. chose to harm ourselves or chose to harm the environment. And, and those particular choices were also personal decisions mm -hmm. and they were also based on emotional belief systems or, or desires that I had that were out of harmony with love as well. So, so we can see that no matter which way we look at this, mm -hmm. it's going to be a personal process. We can't really, you know, you can get a little bit of help from other people in that persons can sort of show you what the problem may be or they can indicate to you the, pro the problem verbally they can uh, they can even say well i've gone through the same experience and have some compassion and sympathy for your experience that you're going to have to go through these things but at the end of the day they can't do it for you mm. uh, because it's a personal emotional process only you can experience your own emotions and only you can do this process yeah. both processes forgiveness and repentance so you can't really um, sit down with a group of people and forgive somebody Mm. or forgive a, a government or something as a group because it's an individual personal process. It's to do with the emotions that exist inside of you yeah. and all of the sins that have existed now that are penalised inside of you mm -hmm. that need to be released. And, and, these, and this is why it has to be a personal process. So there's many other reasons why it's personal and emotional. But as we discussed in our, in our session yesterday, as you mentioned, but we need to keep that in mind at all times. Because mm. what I see is that most people try to share it. You know, they try to share their experience. So I've been hurt by dad. Have you been hurt by dad? Oh, well, let's get together and commiserate about how much mm. we've both been hurt by dad. And, and each one might have a bit of a cry and whatever else. But the commiseration itself is, is going to result in you never completing the process of forgiveness of your father. Mm -hmm. It's the same with repentance. If, if you and I get together and we've both done the same wrong thing, you know, let's say we've both been promiscuous sexually or whatever, and we commiserate with each other about what caused us to get to do those particular things and, you know, how it's felt in our lives and the, and the different uh, hurts that have resulted both to other people and to ourselves as a result of doing that. We can do all of that, but at the end of the day, because we're still commiserating with each other and needing each other to actually share the experience, we're not seeing that it's a personal emotional process. And so we're never going to complete the repentance process. Could I ask you a little bit here mm -hmm. about commiseration? Mm -hmm. So why is the desire for commiseration damaging to our emotional growth? Because it's an expectation on somebody else that they share in your process. And it's also an expectation on someone else that they agree with your sin. And agreement with sin is never going to cause the release of sin. Mm -hmm. And then the agreement that, you know, of uh, or the sharing in a process is never going to fully complete your own process. Mm. So, so it has a lot of uh, damaging effects if we try to commiserate with people or they, we want others to commiserate with us. So you're saying inherent in commiseration is a feeling, not that I want to be free of this emotional pain, but that I want someone else to validate the emotional pain. Is correct. that correct? To approve of me feeling it, to validate it, to make it better or easier for me to feel. And every one of those things are emotional demands on another due Is to it? addiction and therefore sins. Yes. So that we will have to repent again <laughs> at some point in the future. So whenever we're demanding commiseration or, or supplying it, we are actually sinning. Yeah. And therefore, we'll need to repent for those sins at some point in the future. Yeah. So it's hi highly inadvisable to commiserate while you're trying to work through forgiveness and <laughs> repentance, because all you're doing is sinning more and having more to repent for. <laughs> and, and so essentially, you're saying the desire for commiseration is really a desire for it's placing yourself dependent 
upon another person. Well, it depends on the attitude. It might be dependent or it might be a demand. Demand, yeah. In either many way. places it's a demand yeah. rather than a dependency. But either one is a sin yeah. from God's perspective. So either and, one is going to be damaging to you. And it's, it's, even if it's just a desire for, for validation, it's still in opposition with God's overall desire for us to become personally responsible. That's right. Um, and so, therefore, it's going to be well, a sin. It's not in the opposition to the, God's desire for us to become personally responsible, but it is in complete opposition to responsibility itself. Mm -hmm. One has to learn how to, be, how to completely have their own emotions if they're truly going to be responsible. And you can't do that by getting or gaining commiseration from others or sharing in a process with somebody else. Now, what I'm talking about there is different than getting help. Yeah. So getting help is somebody helping us to maybe get over some humps or some, you know, to, to see truth, to see truth initially, or, yeah. or to get over some humps in terms of our recognition or get over some humps in terms of understanding emotions or whatever. Those, all that kind of help is valid. Yeah. I'm here talking about the sharing of, uh, of commiserative information with each other about, mm -hmm. you know, our processes of forgiveness and repentance with no real desire in the end of, to, to get the end result, which is to be completely personally responsible for the process. Mm. Excellent. Thank you. Mm. Just finally about this personal emotional process involved in forgiveness and repentance. Mm -hmm. A question that I know a lot of people have is, why does it have to be so emotional? <laughs> you know, why do I have to, because I know a lot of people, um, perhaps in Christian or New Age circles, wish to use their mind to complete these processes. So why Which is it impossible. does it have to be so emotional? Yeah, yeah. so firstly, the thing that we need to say is that the Christian and New Age concepts of you can forgive just using your head and just saying, I forgive you and all of those kind of things, and you can repent by just saying you're sorry. Yeah. None of these things are true, as they will soon find out, whether it's in the spirit world or in the future on earth, they will find that out because they'll see their condition hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. So it's actually physically impossible to do it with your head and to do it with logic or any of those kind of things. Why is it an emotional process is quite simple, and that is that everything that we feel hurt about is emotional, mm -hmm. and everything that we have done has created emotional hurt in others, which then creates other hurts as well. So, of course, it's going to be an emotional process. Also, the soul is an emotional being. We have to get used to it being an emotional being. We have to actually get used to the concept that at some point in our future, we are going to completely give up the idea of being guided by our mind and we'll be completely be driven by all of our desires and intentions, our emotions, and all of those desires and intentions will be in harmony with love. And therefore, we don't have to think about them too much. We just embrace them because we love them. And, and this is the way God created us to function. It's a beautiful way to function. And anybody who opposes it is just not being very logical when it comes to how they're ever going to, to experience bliss and love and other, and other beautiful emotions in their life. Mm -hmm. So we need to give up the whole concept that you should be guided by your head only. Your head is there to do some logical thoughts, but as we've said in many other presentations, logical thoughts not really possible while you're driven by some very sinful emotions. Yeah. So, you know, the sinful emotions and the loving emotions are all a part of the soul and the sinful emotions need to be given up mm -hmm. if we're ever going to experience bliss and happiness. And, and so forgiveness and repentance are bound to be and will always continue to be emotional processes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Let's talk about the difference between accidental and intentional sin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've touched on this briefly in previous discussion in mm -hmm. that um, God actually views accidental sin differently in terms of compensation, in terms of how it impacts upon us, mm. accidental sin as opposed to how he views intentional sin. Mm. Um, so in this section of our session today, I'd like to really tease out what is accidental sin and what is intentional sin, and then to talk more about how this is relevant to specifically forgiveness and repentance and our attitudes towards forgiveness and repentance. Mm. Sound okay? Sounds good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so God's viewpoint of accident. 
Yeah, we need to start with God's viewpoints of accidents, obviously, because uh, it, it's one thing to say, what is accidental sin? Mm -hmm. But we have to first find out, well, whose viewpoint of an accident <laughs> are we looking at? <laughs> yeah, because I, I've said a lot of things in my life for accidents, but when I really... Uh, <laughs> are they really? <laughs> when I really delve into some self-awareness, I yeah. think, well, no, I definitely did want to be doing what I was doing, mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't want to see what the consequences were, and then I called those consequences accidents. accidents yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So God's got a fairly different view to most of us to what an accident actually is. Mm, obviously. Yeah. Mm. And from what you've already taught us about the operation of God's laws, it's could you say that there's no real things as ac given the operation of laws? Is there even such a thing as an accident in God's universe? No, no, not really. Yeah. From God's perspective, there are no such thing as accidents. Yeah. Um, God created laws which operate, and we need to see sort of the how what we see as accidents are actually occurring because mm -hmm. from God's perspective there's no such thing as an accident and you know obviously God created a universe that where accidents weren't really possible mm -hmm. now our definition of an accident varies greatly from God so obviously we need to look at God's definition of, the, of an accident what is God's definition of an accident yeah. and perhaps it's best here to probably read out what we what, what is the definition written. and then we yep. can discuss that yeah yeah all right so let me We've basically got two, two, groups, of, two groups of incidents. So-called accidents. <laughs> yeah, that are accidents. <laughs> so the first one, an accident is a group of sinful conditions of the soul that God's laws operate upon that then create an event to correct the sinful condition in each person involved in the event. Mm -hmm groups of people and the society that is even affected by the event. Mm -hmm. And that is termed an accident by everyone involved in the event, <laughs> you know. But not so, by God. No, God's not really <laughs> up there going, whoops, that happened. <laughs> Look, God, God foresees every event because every event is mathematically calculated in terms mm -hmm. of its possibility and God knows the intention. So obviously God can see that the intentions of individuals are eventually going to create, given these particular internal possibilities, are going to create thing of the most highly likely outcome. And it's very, very mathematical, in fact. Yeah. And in fact, as a spirit, you get to see how mathematically precise it is so you can actually prevent if you can predict to a degree events well in advance um even not having god's ability to foresee, to foresee everyone's things. personal emotional condition yeah and so yeah it's uh, events become quite predictable mm. and and in fact you and i have had many experiences where i've so, said to you within six months this particular thing is going to happen and within sure 12 enough. months that particular thing is yeah. going to happen and that particular person this is going to happen to them next and sure enough those things have happened yeah. And that's not me being like pro making prophecies. It's just, <laughs> it's just given all the circumstances that I'm aware of, it's pretty mm. predictable that that particular event's going to yeah. happen, given and what I know about God's laws. That's right. It's not because you're God. It's because <laughs> you just are well educated about God's laws and yeah. you, you can view things analytically, not governed by fear-based emotions. So yes. it's fairly predictable. The universe becomes very, very predictable. predictable. Yeah, particularly... It's interesting, particularly when people sin, of course, because, yeah. you know, you, you know the operation of the law and the, in terms of its corrective behaviour. Well, this is the fascinating thing about sin, isn't it? Is that when we live in fear-based, sin-based emotions, uh, it's so, because they are governing our actions, when we hold on to fear-based, sin-based emotions, they govern our actions. Mm. So actually, even though we think we've got free will, our free will choices are limited to what will mm. help us control, suppress and maintain those fear-based, error-based viewpoints. Correct. When you so think about it logically, yeah. you've got all these laws. Every time you sin, you break hundreds of laws. You've got all of those laws imposing their rules upon you now. Yeah. So now you've not got complete freedom anymore. You've no. now got quite a lot of restriction that's going to govern what's going to happen next. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> 
and you are basically governing through your avoidance what you are going to engage in as well. Yes, and, and you're restricting yourself yes. through the process. Obviously. Whereas if you didn't, if you weren't paying notice to those uh, fear based, like we talked about yesterday, you d decide I'm not going to act in harmony with those fears or errors. I'm just going to let them scream in the background and do something different. Yeah. Now your options open up. There's a whole lot of other things that can happen and that you might do. Because the laws make them possible. Yeah. Mm. But before then, yeah, not possible. Not possible. So, so this is an important part of an accident. The first part being this: what what we call is that it's a collective sinful condition of the soul that combines with the laws that are trying to correct those corrective the, those you know collective sinful conditions. Yeah, and that constructs an event through laws yeah. of attraction, cause and effect, and other laws, and and those events are there specifically to correct the the original yeah. uh, out of harmony sinful conditions of yes. the soul. And, and so it, can you really say that's an accident? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but, but the reason we commonly call it an accident on earth is because nobody in that situation willfully thought, I want this next series of events to happen, even though their soul-based condition was creating the circumstances for that? Yeah, you could say they didn't think it in their mind, but their soul's thinking it. Yeah. Their soul is engaging the sinful condition of itself, and, and so the soul is, in, its, in thought, creating these particular things for itself, even if the mind denies that these particular things exist emotionally inside. And isn't that part of the process of why these things happen is to help to bring conscious awareness to mm. what the soul is actually doing. That's right, yeah. to, to bring the intellectual awareness. It, yeah. I, I feel though in most cases most people under this circumstance are aware of the collective sinful conditions that exist prior. They just, and, and they've been made aware through lower events, mm -hmm. lower, when I say lower events, less intense law of attraction based events that we talked about yesterday Yeah. Um, in, in our discussion about, you know, our personal responsibilities and so forth yeah. and God's laws about forgiveness and repentance. We've yeah. already discussed that. So, so there are, uh, there are only certain possibilities that can occur mm -hmm. to correct the sinful condition of the soul. And, and as we discussed previously, these particular events increase in their uh, scope yeah. and operation, Intensity. the more and more people have the same emotion. Yeah. Now, now, many of the sinful emotions on the planet are collectively a part of hundreds or millions, uh, hundreds from hundreds to millions of people, yeah. and even billions of people have some of the same emotions. Mm -hmm. And so naturally, their, their collective emotions are going to create events yeah. through the operation of the law that are trying to correct those emotions. Yeah. And so you can't say that those particular things are accidents, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, they are very mathematically precisely calculated and created by the operation of the law on the sinful soul condition. So then if we consider just quickly before we move on to the second one, mm -hmm. uh, just a quick example to help elucidate this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Say there's two ocean liners that collide or two airplanes that collide. What kinds of things, like, that's commonly called an accident because there's usually multiple uh, factors, multiple individuals involved, none of them who thought I want this collision to happen, but all different factors kind of coincidentally coincide to create an accident, what, what mm. the world calls an accident. Mm. So what kinds of things there where there's, because we've said here there's a group of sinful conditions in the soul mm -hmm. of probably everyone involved, would you say? Even the people who die as passengers or... Yep, everyone, or the, everyone involved. The, Even the people who are survivors, uh, all the people who are relatives of the, of the people who died. All of the people who listen to the uh, to the event, you know, mm -hmm. on radio or television, they're all got certain conditions of the soul that have contributed to the accident. Yeah, um, the so-called accident. Yeah, because it's not really an accident; it's uh, created through law. So, and you can think about it. There's the companies involved in in terms of there's the airframe manufacturer, the engine manufacturer, the it's the, the the maintenance people, the 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 way in which they handle their jobs and all of their things, and their condition of love handling all of those particular things, yeah. and the condition of care of the pilots involved, and the 
and the and the attitudes of the pilots to each other that all has a huge effect yeah. on on what they decide to do the the level of superiority or inferiority a pilot may have in comparison to the other pilots in yeah. the aircraft and and then you've got you know things like well you know we're using fuels that are damaging and and explosive and we're using so we, we've de designed aircraft that are potentially um, very dangerous quite dangerous yeah and um, we're, we're traveling at speeds that are dangerous to the human body. And on top of that, we're uh, traveling in an atmosphere that's also dangerous to the human body. And, uh, and so there's so many things that can potentially go wrong. And many, most of them are, are based on either unloving intention where mm -hmm. people are trying to save money, cut costs, mm -hmm. you know, save maintenance save money with fares uh you know not design an, uh, an aircraft that's more safe yep. or the ha or giving the ability for people to be able to escape a, a potential uh, safety hazard with an aircraft mm -hmm. and and there's so many things that are all based upon economics and other things that god views as all out of harmony with love mm. and they're all attempting to be corrected so does that mean uh playing devil's advocate here mm -hmm. uh, does that mean that um we hear about an accident where you know 500 people died and airplane crashes and we go oh they were all just full of sin and uh you know they god obviously thought they deserve what they got that's really not what you're saying at all is it not at all no. no i'm saying the law it's like it's like a person who accidentally falls off a building yep like there's a whole set of conditions that cause their particular accident which yeah. could involve some negligence but also could involve somebody pushing them it could involve all sorts of factors right but there are attraction based events that are all there to okay. correct different soul conditions so what i'm saying is the whole human race has error based soul condition based on sin yeah. that creates accidents now the purpose of the accident is to correct the error based soul condition mm -hmm. Now, we as humanity have a, a great capacity to create vehicles that are much more safer than the vehicles we have created. Mm -hmm. That applies to cars as well as buses and trains and aircraft. Mm -hmm. But we just don't want to spend the money on it or we don't want to spend the resources on it or we use one third of our resources for warfare, mm -hmm. which, which means that we, have, we lose a lot of potential resources in warfare that could be then reallocated to to making our world much safer place for us mm. we also have a huge problems with economy in other words we view money as god rather than love as being the most important decision and so we make start making choices and decisions that are not based upon love but based upon money and god's trying to correct all of these things so yes at some point in the future i'm sure we can make a vehicle that is in complete harmony with love that allows us to travel you know mm -hmm. from here to the other side of the world in a short space of time without any danger to any of us occupants but we're not going to do that unless we learn about love mm. and and that's what we need to understand yeah. now all of us have errors in love it's a world it's a world epidemic as we discussed and the errors in love differ per, per individual, but we are all collectively responsible for what happens. Yeah. And we can't just blame, you know, somebody who was a part of the aircraft accident. Just the fact that I'm watching it on television means that I must have part participated in it soul wise. Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even seen the yes. event. And so and so, you know, there's participants all over the world of any kind of so-called accident, mm -hmm. but they're not accidents. They are all attraction based events. Laws govern them and and nothing and everything becomes predictable and this is why god can predict everything because yeah. everything is predictable based upon the law the operation of law and the condition of the people involved yeah yeah thank you mm. all right mm. so that's our first uh thing that we would is so you can't we, really say that's an accident could you? it's not really an accident no. but it's what we commonly call we call accidents. it an accident but god yep. doesn't define yep. it as one yep. god for god it's a it's a purposeful creation of events by the law in order to correct a soul-based unloving condition yeah and we we need to discover what that soul-based unloving if if we want to be self-responsible beings we we'll want to discover what that is and yeah. we can't make assumptions yeah. well, and forgiveness we can't... and repentance will help us discover those things yeah yeah that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And it's great, like in the case of an aircraft, that they actually investigate them. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and accident investigation is a great thing because it helps 
an aircraft become more loving yes so so having being in something like an accident aircraft investigate you know that's aircraft. my second chosen profession yeah, if that, i wasn't doing this i would do that that's I'm a fascinating, so fascinating area and yeah. um, but you you do it you, you, if you're focused on loving people and so and looking after people's lives and caring for people and caring for the pilots and caring for the company who runs the operation and caring for everyone involved then you could see that you can you can do a lot of good things yeah and what those aircraft accident investigators have found that when people have been unloving in their choices it actually causes a lot more accidents yeah. so-called accidents yes so can they really be said to be accidents mm. there's somebody who's holding on to sin within themselves and that has a ripple effect on to so many other people yeah and it yeah. can be just simple simple you know things that a person chooses to do out of harmony of love breaking a rule here or a rule there mm -hmm. that can cause you know 500 people to die yeah uh, but but it's not just that little tiny thing yeah that the aircraft accident investigation would would expose no because there's also all the collective soul condition that yes. created it that they haven't been able to investigate if we do aircraft investigation god's way god's way it would have to <laughs> would. also look at the soul condition of all the people involved and so what was exposed in all those people mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay brilliant mm -hmm. thank you all right our second definition of what is an accident <coughs> or what's commonly called an accident mm -hmm. Making a mistake due to a lack of education or a lack of developed condition of love that results in the breaking of one or more of God's laws and, its subse and the subsequent consequences that come from that mistake. Mm. So here we really need to define a mistake as well, don't we? Yes, yeah, so you're basically saying a mistake is a mistake in love. Yes, and it's something and that it triggers behaviour. Are you saying it's something that I'm not... Um, educated about i'm not educated about it. it's a it's a it's a sincere lack of uh yeah, awareness let, let, or let's knowledge let's maybe give an example it's easier probably to deal with an example yep when we first uh, when we first incarnate in the in the conceived condition we are completely uh, void of information we, we don't know anything you know un, unlike most people would you know religious people might suggest mm -hmm. we don't know anything we, we are we're like a blank soul yeah we're blank with emotion. We, we don't know any emotion. We don't know what it's like to experience emotion. We don't know ourselves. We don't know what life is. We don't understand life. We don't understand anything. When, when we get to be one or two years of age, we start to understand a bit more, but we don't understand what it means to be in love. We don't understand what it means to have sex. We don't, the, the, life is a growing experience where we yeah. learn new things based on our development. By design, by, by God. Design. Yeah. By design. Yeah. Because we can't absorb all the truths of the universe in one hit. It mm -hmm. would be an impossibility. It would, it would kill us. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so we need to be able to absorb all the truths of the universe in a gradual process. Right? That's why God designed it to be a gradual process. Mm -hmm. And the gradual process inclu includes the earth-based experience and then what happens after we die, the process that happens there, and then what mm -hmm. happens after we transform into a celestial being, what happens there, and then what happens when we hit the soul union condition, and what happens there, and then who knows what will happen after then, because nobody's gone beyond that place uh, from this earth. But, but the reality is that uh, possibly and probably is even higher conditions to reach, all which will be reached gradually over time through the transformative process of the soul. Mm -hmm. Given that being the fact, at any single point in time, there's information we don't have and that's legitimate. Yeah. It's not like we don't know yeah. and we legitimately do not know. Mm -hmm. Now, God doesn't punish or penalise sin where we don't know things. He just views it as mistakes in love where we hadn't learned about love yet. That's all he's really, and he's trying to teach us about love. Yeah. So this second collective thing of accidents, you could say, uh, when we didn't know anything about love and we didn't know what we were learning and we didn't know through the experience, you could liken it to a child getting up to walk for the first time. He doesn't know how to walk. He drags himself up. He's mm -hmm. standing, standing, wobbling. He makes a few steps, falls flat on his face, has a bit of a cry. His crying is the result of the sin. Mm -hmm. So he it, fell over, he hurt is, himself, he cried. It's a sin to fall over in that Well, it, it's, a, it's an accident, a, a true accident. It's a true accident, isn't it? it? And, and so therefore, the crying is the completion of the accident. Yeah. From God's perspective, the crying, the result, is the completion of the sin. In other words, there is no more penalty. That's it. Mm -hmm. He fell over, he cried, 
he now feels better, he gets up, he tries again. Mm -hmm. That's it. That, there's no more to it than that. There's no future punishment of that soul now. There's no, nothing, nothing there's no more, compensatory no compensatory effect, effect anymore yeah. other than the fact that he just cried. That's the only compensatory effect for falling over. So what if what if I'm I'm a child and I fall over? Mm -hmm. It's a it's a true accident from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. But mum or dad rushes over and says, "Don't cry, don't cry. You're all right." Well, now mum and dad are committing a sin. And there's a hurt that's entering me from not the fall, but from mum and dad. Potentially, yes. It yeah. doesn't have to enter you. Yeah. It, it it may enter you. Yes. It depends on the child and what predispositions it has and a lot of other yeah. factors. Yeah. But it may. If the child shut, so I should have completed the idea. If if, if the, the child, child is shut shuts down, down violently, if they hit, don't cry, you know, and they hit it you're being crying. silly, or they they're diminished in some way to shut off their emotional experience. Yeah. Then it's now the child has not completed the result of the sin. Which like, is the breaking of the law. Which is the falling the, down? Yeah, breaking or, the law of gravity. Yeah. You fell down and hurt yourself. Yeah. You broke the law of gravity. You hurt yourself. Yeah. Right? You fell down. You hurt yourself. It breaks the law of gravity. You cry. It's over. Right? Yeah. But if you're punished for crying, yeah. now you will store that hurt. And now at some point in the future, that hurt will need to be released. So is the hurt associated with the fall or with the emotional shutdown or both? Well, there's initial hurt when you fell, yeah. which is a physical one, not yeah. emotional. It's yes. just a physical one. You fell down. Well, that's it. You cry yeah. because it hurt, physically yeah. hurt. So you cry and let it go. Yeah. Right? The emotional hurt is more damaging, yeah. where the suppression of the tears. Where you're either judged or punished for the for tears. For the tears. Yeah. If you're laughed at or you're judged or punished for the tears or whatever. Now, that, that's a more painful experience, which obviously will have its own uh, problems yeah. inside of you and if you refuse to let them go yeah which most children are taught to do mm -hmm. you'll have a build-up of those things over time mm. so so the reality is a mistake a true mistake is really just an instant reflection of a law being broken and, and remember the law is there for safety purposes you know mm -hmm. so the child learns that if he gets too high off the ground and falls over he's going to really hurt himself because because if he's just walking along and falls over it's bad enough but if it gets high off the ground and falls over, yes. it's going to be a disaster, right? Yeah. And so the child learns that in the first few falls. It now learns, oh, I've got to just take a little bit more care, you know? <laughs> there's a... There's a um, and if I fall down, I'd crumple down or whatever. Yeah. And after, the child learns to do that. It yeah. feels, I'm going down, so I might as well just crumple down and it's not going to hurt so much then, <laughs> yeah. you know? And the child learns the ways to, to, to deal with the, the effect of the law. Of gravity. Us, yeah. Using this particular technique. So, so from God's perspective, it, he, the child did break the law. He fell down. Mm -hmm. he, the law of gravity has been broken. There's a penalty, which is the, so the start, force of the body in. Yeah, got it. Yeah, the force of the body is going to cause a, when it hits another hard surface, yeah. <laughs> is going to hurt. And but but from God's perspective, there is no sin in the sense of something that needs to be repented for. Or forgiven. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. It's big, it's just a learning process under those circumstances. Yeah, so it's a true mistake, a true yes. accident from God's perspective. And there is really. no further future penalty upon that soul for that mistake. So is it is other it, than the other than the fact that the law just operated immediately and yep. gave the result. So it would be correct to say then that where there is no pre existing sin mm -hmm within me but i break a law mm -hmm. that is a true accident from a true mistake and an accident from god's perspective correct mm. yeah and it's not even if there's no pre-existing sin it's it also is if there's no pre-existing sin which you caused so right. if an adult caused the child to be unsteady yes right due to a different emotions in the adult already being projected at the child yeah that's different for the for the adult than it is for the child. If the child falls over under those circumstances, the adult will pay its penalty mm. emotionally. Mm. There's a compensatory effect for the parent. For the adult, yeah. not for the child. <laughs> Holy mackerel, there's women all over the world who are mothers who've projected terrible fear at their children every time they go and do any physical activity. So you're Correct. saying that has an impact on the child and the and child's the subsequent lack of confidence, which then creates accidents and physical and harm, harm for the child will be paid for by the parent the parent because the parent projects the emotion of fear on the child yeah, that's and that's what caused their uncertainty does that make sense <laughs> i'm just 
So, so, so we can see that for the child, it doesn't really matter that, that the, whether the parent uh, caused some pre-existing conditions in the child, what matters is who caused it. Mm. So, so the child didn't cause the pre-existing condition that causes the accident, so the child's not responsible. So the only effect is going to be the effect of gravity in this particular yep. case and no other effect. And it's yep. done and dusted the moment the child is allowed to cry about the whole thing. It's done mm -hmm. and dusted. There's no more results. It's a normal fact of life. So then it's also fair to say that the majority of accidents happen in childhood. With the majority of God's definition of an accident. Yes, I mean, true accidents. <laughs> true accidents happen, happen in, in childhood. childhood. Because beyond that point, so say I'm shut down and then I have sin within me. Sure, my parents shut me down, and but I'm carrying that. Now God wants me to be personally responsible for that sin. Yeah, no, so, but we've got to be careful here because God uh, always attributes the sin to its original cause. Yeah. So, so if you have, as a result of your parents' sin, emotions in you that then cause you to have accidents, then they're not going to be attributed to you. They're going to be attributed to your parents' sin. Mm. Right? So, so all through your life, in fact, so it's not only just as a child, but all through your life, there are times when you're learning and it's sincere. And at those times, any mistake that's being made, yep. God, the result is what the result was and that's it. It's over and done with at that moment. Mm. just like it was for the child who fell over and they had to have a cry because they hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. It's over in the moment. There's no further future uh, action, decision, compensatory effects, forgiveness, repentance, nothing that needs to occur because it's now it's over. So could you give an example of what that would be when I'm learning something emotionally or spiritually? I can think yeah, of physical... Oh, like. there's plenty of examples. There's yeah. millions of examples. But let's take a few emotional ones, perhaps. Yeah. And let's say... I, I feel that it's a really good thing to try to help people who, who are starving to get some food. Yep. So what I do is I, I go around and I collect all the food up and I, and I put it all in boxes and everything, and then I send it via ship to another country. Mm -hmm. By the time it's gotten there, it's rotten. Yeah. Now... I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't educated, I didn't know I enough about food. Food and or, preservation of food yep. and any of those kind of things. Yep. My intention was good. Yeah. I wanted to do it for the right reason. My intention was good. I wanted to help people who are starving in different countries. My intention was very good. There's nothing wrong with my intention. I made a mistake. Mm. Which, so it was an accident. So it was an accident. There's no sin that's going to be attributed to me. And the only problem is that the food didn't get there, and I might feel sad about that, but it's not a compensatory effect. It's just, it's a, just a result, of the, result of the law. I'm crying about the fact that the food spoiled, and I, and I, and I might feel a bit silly that I didn't know yeah, about yeah. that, but uh, bearing in mind, depending on my age, yeah. but, uh, but at the end of the day, that will be it. And, and in fact, I'll be rewarded for my intention from yeah. my God. So not only does God not include that as a sin. I don't have to repent. I don't I'll, have to repent. In fact, God will reward me for yes. the fact that I desired to do it, even though yeah. it didn't work out. Yeah. So the spoiling of the food, which is the operation of the law, is very much like the operation of the gravity for the toddler. There's no actual compensatory repentance. To, there's no sin yeah. in the person. Yeah. Here's another example. Let's say somebody comes around and says, look, I need to borrow a knife. And you go, no worries. And you give them a knife. Yeah. And they go off and murder their wife with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. you were being kind, doing what they'd ask. You didn't know their intention. Mm -hmm. Now, at some point in your future, you may have felt it. If you yeah. were developed further emotionally, you might have felt, oh, their intention for getting a knife. I maybe need to ask why they want the knife, but, mm. but at the moment you didn't think of that and, uh, and it was just a mistake. Yeah. Like, yeah. You gave them a knife and you gave them the means to hurt, harm somebody else. You didn't know that though at the time. Yeah. Uh, it's, an, it's just a mistake. Whatever you feel about it at the moment, you might know to have just a cry that, oh boy, it's terrible that I gave them the knife, you know, yes. you have a cry about that. That's just an immediate effect of the law, but yeah. it's over and done with from God's perspective. There's yeah. no forgiveness required, no repentance required. So, so earlier we talked about um, the big airline accident, trying to expose a lot of sin within people. Mm. So if I'm a manufacturer and I'm operating on what I understand to be the laws of physics or, or whatever when I'm, when I'm manufacturing a single part mm -hmm. for, um, for an aeroplane, mm -hmm. 
uh, and there's no negligence in the way that I'm doing the manufacturing. I'm manufacturing to specification. I've been very careful about materials. I'm being thorough. I'm not trying to cut work. costs yep. everywhere and I'm checking everything and double checking everything like many of them do. Yes. Yep. And then there's a, an, a meteorological event while the airplane carrying that part is in the air that mm -hmm. has not been encountered before mm -hmm. by airlines. Yeah, let's say it's a lightning strike or something that was unusual and somehow affected some apparatus inside the airline. Something's but, never happened before. Yep. And it causes the the crash of the plane. All these people die, yep. everyone's dead, and it's, it's traced back to if I had have done this thing different in my manufacture, then I could have prevented it, but nobody knew that beforehand. That's right. Is that an accident? Am I exposing? Is the no, people the, who died is their sin? Like, well, no. Now we're getting into a place where we've now got a combination of things. Okay. Because, and the reason why is because we've now got. Uh, firstly, my personal intentions were good. Yes. However, um, flight is a dangerous thing. Yes. And everybody who flies needs to take personal responsibility for the fact that it is a dangerous thing. Yes. So if you personally choose to fly you personally need to take responsibility for the potential consequences of flight. I know there's risks. You know there's thing. risks. Yeah. Now, I'm, there I'm be... breaking a lot of God's laws. Well, it's like well, driving a car, them, isn't it? Yeah, you yeah. know there's risks. You yeah. know that somebody could do something and it wasn't even under your control, yeah. so-called. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden some accident occurs, yeah. obviously through the laws, but something occurs and to correct a whole series of behaviours in a lot of different people. Yeah. So, so your intention wasn't to down the plane. No. Your intention wasn't to kill the people. Your intention was even to be safe and, and, mm -hmm. and your intention wasn't to save money and your intention wasn't to, to, you know, it was to do everything proper and right. Your intention yeah. was good all the way along, mm -hmm. right? So what within you was it triggering? And maybe it might have been triggering a feeling of guilt you had from your childhood. Yes. And so, that was a condition emotionally that was in you. Yes. That needs to be released. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. So then we're going back into the first definition, which Correct. was there's a group of sinful conditions in my soul. So perhaps not related to the actual manufacturer, but from something else. So maybe, maybe the whole reason why it happened for me trigger. was because I just had some guilt that I had to release. And and the event, oh, it was my plan, my part, my thing, you know, and I have some good cries about, you know, feeling guilty about that. Yeah. And then I released the guilt from my childhood and then it's done and dusted for me. Gotcha. Right? It's just there to trigger that event, really, yeah. to trigger that emotion. So the laws are operating to expose whatever sin is within me. Exactly. And yeah. that, that with the aircraft now, because there's so many people involved, mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, thousands of people, in fact, are involved down to it, you know, family people, members, family members, and rescue and every, squads. Res yeah, there's the so many thing. combinations yeah. there on that particular, in that particular event that uh, due to unhealed emotions from the childhood, you can see there's literally thousands of potential emotions that could be dealt with with the one event, yeah. which created the event through the law. And, and so the law is just in that regard. The, uh, every single person, if they had released those emotions earlier, yes would not have participated in the event. Yes. Okay, so that's where we get to understanding that our first definition of an accident, of what's commonly called an accident on Earth, mm -hmm. is mostly correct in most cases. Yes, it's, uh, or it's a combination of both. Yes. Good. Usually. Yep. Um, but it's, yep. it's very rare to find <clears throat> one that's just making a mistake. Due to a being, lack of education. Due to a lack yeah. of education. But, but it is, uh, when I say rare, rare in comparison to the number of accidents. <laughs> <laughs> to the amount of things we call accidents, yes. the majority of those are actually where there's sinful conditions collectively and individually for everyone involved. Yeah. God's laws are operating to expose that sin. It's not operating to punish the sin. It's operating to expose it. That's what I was alluding to before. It's not a punitive thing. No. God is not trying to um, The laws are all operating in combination change. with the collective condition of the emotion. So, yeah. so it, the event will occur because of that. Yeah. It's not, you could almost say the event is occurring because of the collective mixture of emotions in each individual involved in the event. Mm -hmm. and and interacting with the laws that God has made. Yes. And that's why the event occurred. 
Yeah. So, so God doesn't see those kind of events as, oh, I'm punishing you for this and I'm punishing you for that. And you get a lot of religious people who go down that track. You know, oh, I don't know why God punished me by taking my daughter away from me by yeah. that accident and all those kind of things. It's not the case at all. Mm. God's just trying to correct sinful emotional conditions that are pre-existing. Yeah. And the laws are trying to do it. God, God's intention is, is always loving for you. And even the law's intentions are to correct the conditions so that your life will be better. Mm. And so that you don't create so-called accidents. Yeah, so there's less pain and suffering on the planet. Yeah, the, yeah. the reality is, is if, if everybody dealt with the underlying causal emotions, there actually would be no nothing defined as an accident that would not be a mistake yes. in other words a lack of education yes but at the moment that's not true yeah. at the moment most of the so-called accidents are not due to a lack of education they are due to the choices collectively and individually we are making as societies and individuals that affect our long-term conditions of what's going on and therefore create accidents yeah. we tolerate large amounts of deaths like, for instance, vehicle deaths. We tolerate large amounts of vehicle deaths every year mm -hmm. without correcting why they occur. Now, some corrections are being made, like airbags, for example, and you know, but, uh, but everyone wants to go fast. That's part of the problem, right? <laughs> <laughs> everyone wants to get there sooner. You know, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's emotional conditions of a lack of love that are about that, mm -hmm. about wanting to get there fast, wanting to get there sooner, not leaving enough time and all those kind of things they are a big part of accidents mm. and it doesn't matter how many airbags you have depending on how fast you're going it can be disastrous yeah. right yes. so there's also tolerances of vehicles and maintenance and repairs and all these other Standard. things of which we're individually yeah. liable and responsible for yeah and many of us don't carry them out we, yeah. we tolerate something getting worse and worse and worse and worse until it's almost unro completely unroadworthy. And then we go, oh, I got picked up the other day for being unroadworthy. How unfair is that? You know, <laughs> without yeah. seeing the, the love based issues involved with that. Yeah. And it's one thing to drive, you know, 200 kilometres an hour on an autobahn, mm -hmm. knowing the risks yeah. that 200 kilometres an hour, your body's not going to cope with anything that happens. Right? It's one thing to do that. Right, and to do it re in relative safety because you're all going in the same direction and there's no one stopped and all there's, those things. There's a, um, other risks that are heightened on a two-way uh, highway are reduced on an autobahn. So you're so weighing risks. Versus risk. Yeah. And this is what we do very badly because mm. most of our risks, when we take, start taking risks, humans also take it risks with love. Yeah. And that's where we start making sinful mistakes. Yes. We stop, we stop considering love and we make the sinful mistake and now the laws are all in operation to correct it. So something's yeah. going to happen now. Yeah. yeah. And this is the same with even things like terrorism and things like that. A direct result of other conditions existing. Yeah. And any, any, any inte intelligent person knows that. Yes. That terrorism doesn't just pop up out of nowhere. A person who's completely happy with Doesn't their life and their, yeah. and their family and, and, and ha has a completely uh, sound and psychologically sound viewpoint of life is not going to go off and murder 100 people and die in the process. No. Right? So, so you know, there has to be other conditions, sinful conditions that are creating it. Mm -hmm. And the key is to remove them. And humans are responsible for removing them. Yeah. So, so when it comes to God's definition of an accident, a lot of accidents are, are really mixtures of what God would classify as actual occurrences that have been designed to be created because of the collective condition of humanity mixing with God's laws. Mm -hmm. And then other things are occurring because of sometimes people just don't know. They're not educated. They're not educated. And it's a part of gaining education. It's a part education. of gaining education or life in and, life. And what I think about when we talk about this issue of accidents and how few accidents, few of what the world calls an accident are really an accident from God's perspective mm. is, Two things. One is that both the um, the law-based operations that are trying to highlight the collective sin and the just natural consequences of making a mistake, it, due to, it, it's all about God trying to op educate us about law yeah, and love. To educate or correct. Educate or correct. Yeah. And the correction is a part of the education. Of course. It's when we make a mistake or we purposely decide to do something wrong. When we're learning maths, there's instruction. 
Okay. And then we do the exercises and someone corrects that. Mm -hmm. And that helps us to learn exactly. the, the content. It's the same kind of process. It's the same thing. It's a normal way of, uh, of growing. Yes. A normal yeah. way of growing. We need to see it as such. Yeah. And, this, th and that is the second thing that I think about is that because there is so much faith on earth in an a punitive God, a punishing God, an unloving God, people have faith in that, people believe in that, yeah. then when we talk about the fact that most of what we call accidents are not accidents, they're operating upon the sin within us, we think that it's a punitive operation when really if we had mm. faith and knowledge of a loving God, we'd say, oh, thanks, God. I know sin is not something you want me to have. So well, I feel also we want to blame God. That's why yeah. we call them acts of God. You know, yeah, we want to blame God yeah. for because of, for a lot of reasons. And one of the reasons is we don't want to take personal responsibility for the decisions we made to get ourselves in the position where we, yeah. where that particular yeah. event occurred. Yeah. So, you know, there are many so-called accidents that actually occur that you can see a whole chain of events have occurred up until the point. And yeah. this is what they find when they do aircraft investigations and so forth. Um, they always find usually a chain of events that have occurred mm -hmm. that have created the actual accident. Yeah. And it's very rare for aircraft to have accidents now because they have a chain of events that they trace down and find the, the underlying cause. motivations or causes for the particular accidents involved. Yeah. And once they do that, they can make something safer. Yes. And if it's safer, it's obviously more loving. Yeah. Yeah. yeah fantastic. So, so yeah, it's important to understand God's definition of an accident because yep. then we can start looking at, well, how does God handle the sin part of it? Yeah, <laughs> so, so let's move yeah, on to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>